Greetings, everyone. Get your King James Bible. Turn to Jeremiah chapter 33. 33 is a very prominent number in the Masonic Lodge. I'm just pointing that out. I'm not saying there's a connection or anything. This is a continuation of the Jeremiah series. I'm going to try to finish this series. This is Chaplain Bob Walker, Light of the World Ministries in John 8:12. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. And Jesus is that light of life. Jeremiah 33 in verse 1. Moreover, the word of the Lord came into Jeremiah the second time, while he was yet shut up in the court of the prison, saying, Thus saith the Lord, the maker thereof, the Lord that formed it to establish it, the Lord is his name. Call unto me, and I will answer thee, and show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not. Let's read verse 3 again. He says, Call unto me, and I will answer thee, and show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not. Isn't that what happened in Egypt? When Israel was in slavery? Oh yeah. The Lord showed them things that, that they know us not. Verse 4. For thus saith the Lord, the God of Israel, concerning the houses of this city, and concerning the houses of the king of Judah, which are thrown down by the mounts, and by the sword. They come to fight with the Chaldeans, but it is to fill them with the dead bodies of men whom I have slain in mine anger and in my fury for all whose wickedness I have hid my face from the city. So Judah went out to fight against the Chaldeans, but... According to God's plans, it's just going to be the dead bodies of the of Judah for disobeying the Lord in the past and disobeying him now. Jeremiah said, "Open the gates. Let the me are the Chaldeans and the Babylonians in. Bow down to them and serve them, and you shall live." But they said, "Nope, we ain't going to do that." We're going to fight them. Well, no problem. They come to fight with the Chaldeans, but it is to fill them with the dead bodies of men whom I have slain in mine anger and in my fury for all whose wickedness I have hid from this city. Behold, I will bring it health and cure and I will cure them and reveal unto them the abundance of peace and truth. Well, this will happen in the what they call the Messianic Age, when Christ returns in glory and destroys all the enemies. Verse 7. And I will cause the captivity of Judah and the captivity of Israel to return and to build them as at the first. Now remember, Judah was taken into captivity with Babylon. And after 70 years, they were to return. The Medes and the Persians conquered Babylon and allowed Judah to return to Jerusalem. You can read about this in the books of Ezra and the books of Nehemiah. However, 
A number of years prior to that, northern Israel, whose capital was Samaria, was taken capital by the Assyrians. They never returned to the land. At least not generally most of them. The great majority never returned to the land, per the Bible. I mean, there might have been a few individuals, but um, the Bible does not say that Israel ever returned to their land. So verse 7 has to be the future. And I will cause the captivity of Judah and the captivity of Israel to return and will build them as at the first. And who is this I? Well, this I is not the United Nations in 1948. No, that I is the Lord. Verse 8. And I will cleanse them from all their iniquity, whereby they have sinned against me, and I will pardon all their iniquities whereby they have sinned, and whereby they have transgressed against me. Well, that was the purpose of why Christ came to the earth. Let's read verse 8 again. And I will cleanse them from all their iniquity, whereby they have sinned against me. And I will pardon all their iniquities, whereby they have sinned, and whereby they have transgressed against me. Hmm. Let's go to the book of Zechariah. Z-E-C-H-A-R-I-A-H. -A -A he was considered a minor prophet, not because of the importance of the message, but rather minor because of the size. Jeremiah, Isaiah, Ezekiel were much, much larger books. That's why Obadiah, Zechariah, Zephaniah, uh, Jonah, I think Jonah, maybe, maybe Jonah, maybe not, Amos, Nahum were considered minor prophets because their, their messages were rather short, but to the point. Zechariah chapter 3, verse 1. And he showed me Joshua the high priest, standing before the angel of the Lord, and Satan standing at his right hand to resist him. Ah. And the Lord said unto Satan, The Lord rebuke thee, O Satan. Even the Lord that hath chosen Jerusalem rebuke thee. Is not this a brand plucked out of a fire? Uh, what did they do back in the Old West? Didn't they used to take cattle and put a brand on them as a mark of ownership? You know, they'd put it in the fire and then they would stick it on the rear end of the cattle and that would be your brand. I mean, don't they even call, uh, you know, companies? Oh, yeah, you know, uh, what's a Band-Aid? A Band-Aid is a brand. A bandage is not a Band-Aid, but Band-Aid is so famous that everybody thinks, oh, a Band-Aid. Uh, you know, they think a bandage. You know, that's... You know, and when you think of Aunt Jemima, you think of pancakes and uh, syrup. Well, oh, wait, that's not politically correct anymore. So they changed that. So we'll see how that works out. And the Lord said unto Satan, The Lord rebuke thee, O Satan. Even the Lord that hath chosen Jerusalem rebuke thee. Is not this a brand plucked out 
of the fire. Now remember, this is saying the Lord said unto Satan. But in verse 1 it says, And he showed Joshua the high priest standing before the angel of the Lord, and Satan standing at his right hand to resist him. So evidently this angel of the Lord appears to be the Lord. And the word angel just means messenger. I suspect, as many Bible scholars do, that this angel of the Lord is Christ before he came in a human body. So, I did a Bible study on that, if anybody's interested. Because the angel of the Lord spoke in the first person as if he was the Lord. So, I don't know. Something to think about. But not all angels were like that. Just, you know, the angel of the Lord. O oh, Satan, even the Lord that hath chosen Jerusalem rebuke thee. Is not this a brand plucked out of the fire? And a brand on cattle was a mark of ownership. Would you have rather have the, the brand of the Lord, the seal of the Lord, or the mark of the beast? Verse 3. Now Joshua was clothed with filthy garments and stood before the angel. And he answered and spake unto those that stood before him, saying, Take away the filthy garments from him. And unto him he said, Behold, I have caused thine iniquity to pass from thee. God caused his sin to pass from him. Behold, I have caused thine iniquity to pass from thee, and I will clothe thee with a change of raiment, clothing. Verse 5, And I said, Let them set a fair mitre upon his head. So they set a fair mitre upon his head. Uh, it's a type of religious hat, people. So they set a fair mitre upon his head and clothed him with garments. And the angel of the Lord stood by. And the angel of the Lord protested unto Joshua, saying, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, if, if thou wilt walk in my ways, and if thou wilt keep my charge, then thou shalt also judge my house, and shalt also keep my courts, and I will give thee places to walk among these that stand by. Hear now, O Joshua the high priest, thou and thy fellows that sit before me, for they are men wondered at, for behold, I will bring forth my servant, the branch. For behold, the stone that I have laid before Joshua, upon one stone shall be seven eyes. Behold, behold, I will engrave the graving thereof, saith the Lord, and I will remove the iniquity of that land in one day. Hmm, very interesting. In that day, saith the Lord of hosts, shall ye call every man his neighbor under the vine and under the fig tree. Well, the vine was the symbol of Israel, and the fig tree was generally the symbol of Judah. And of course, Judah is part of Israel, you know. So, what's up with uh, a change of raiment? Now, remember, Joshua the priest had filthy garments, and he was given new uh, clean raiment. So, keep that in mind. Let's go to Revelation chapter 7, verse 9. 
After this I beheld, and lo, a great multitude, which no man could number, of all nations and kindreds and people and tongues, stood before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed with white robes and palms in their hands, and cried with a loud voice, saying, Salvation to our God, which sitteth upon the throne, and unto the Lamb. And all the angels stood round about the throne, and about the elders and the four beasts, and fell before the thrones on their faces, and worshipped God, saying, Amen, blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be unto our God forever and ever. Amen. And one of the elders answered, saying unto me, What are these which are arrayed in white robes? And whence came they? So, you know, basically, who are these that are clothed with these white robes and where did they come from? Well, that would be the Bob translation. Verse 14. And I said unto him, Sir, thou knowest. Oh, <laughs> hey, dude, you know the answer to that, you know. And he said unto me, These are they which came out of great tribulation and have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. How did they get clean white clothing? They had to wash them white in the blood of the Lamb. Verse 15. Therefore are they before the throne of God, and serve him day and night in his temple. And he that sitteth on the throne shall dwell among them. They shall hunger no more, neither thirst any more, neither shall the sun light on them, nor any heat. For the Lamb, which is in the midst of the throne, shall feed them, and shall lead them unto living fountains of waters. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. All right, let's go to the book of Hebrews, chapter 10. Uh, the book of Hebrews is, uh, I believe, purposely didn't tell you who the author is. But whoever wrote the book of Hebrew, of course, of course, it's, you know, the Holy Spirit, by inspiration of the Holy Spirit. But uh, whoever wrote the book of Hebrews, under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, of course, had a extensive knowledge of the Old Testament and specifically the book of Leviticus. Anybody that studies the book of Leviticus uh, should read the book of Hebrews in conjunction, you know, maybe before or after, either way. But in uh, my commentary on Jeremiah 31, where I talk about the New Covenant, well, the Bible talks about the New Covenant. So let's go to Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 16. Hebrews 10, 16. This is the covenant that I will make with them after those days, saith the Lord. I will put my laws into their hearts, and in their minds will I write them. And their sins and iniquities will I remember no more. Now our remission of these is, there is no more offering for sin. You know, you don't need to do an offering for sin every single day because it was paid in full by Christ on the cross. Jesus said, it is finished. Verse 18, Now where remission of these is, there is no more offering for sin. You know, when you pay a debt, the debt's paid. You don't have to keep paying that debt. It's paid in full. You know, but when you're dealing with man, you got to get a receipt that says paid in full. But when you're dealing with Christ, you don't have to. Your receipt paid in full is... Uh, between the pages of the King James Bible, verse 19, 
Having therefore, brethren, boldness. Having therefore, brethren, boldness to enter in the holiest by the blood of Jesus. Do you know in the Old Testament, in the tabernacle or in the temple, there was called the Holy of Holies. It's where the mercy seat was. The high priest, once a day, I mean once a year, I believe on the Day of Atonement, would have to go in with blood. If he didn't enter with, if he went in there on another day or without blood, I believe he would die. Matter of fact, if he was unworthy, it's possible the Lord would kill him. According to what I've read, legend, they would tie a rope around his ankle so that if he did die, they could drag him out without having to go in there. Because if anybody went into the Holy of Holies and they weren't authorized, well, there was a penalty to pay. I, From what I understand. But with the blood of Christ, verse 19, it says, Having... Therefore, brethren, boldness to enter into the holiest by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way which he hath consecrated for us through the veil, that is to say, his flesh. Remember when Christ died, the veil of the temple ripped from the top to the bottom, from heaven to earth. Verse 21, And having an high priest over the house of God, let us draw near with a true heart, in full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience, conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without favor, wavering, for he is faithful that promised. And let us consider one another to provoke unto love and to good works. So in verse 23, he says, let us hold fast. Hold strong the profession of our faith without wavering. For he is faithful that promised. And let us consider one another to, prov to provoke unto love and to good works works. See, good works always follows faith. Read James chapter 2. James even said that faith without works is dead being alone. Works are our proof you're in the faith. I mean, that's just the way it goes. I mean, if you have good works and you're obedient to the Lord, there's uh, idiots out there that will say, oh, well, you're one of those lordship salvation people. Oh, you're trying to earn your salvation by being obedient and keeping the law and uh, doing good works. And then they'll show you how great their faith is by uh, being disobedient and not doing anything worthy of the name of Christ. Well, Lord might have another place for those people. I don't know. He's going to make that decision. Uh, not me, but read James chapter 2. Yeah. See, those kind of people turn grace into a license to sin. And they live just like the world. And there was a an evangelist that said, you know, you take the churchy people and the worldly people, and you put them in a bag and shake them all up and pour them out, and you don't know which one would go to hell quick first. <laughs> and uh, that's about right. That's about right. So let us consider one another to provoke unto love and to good works, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together. Oh, if only we had people to first assemble with. Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another 
and so much the more as ye see the day approaching. Well, this is a scary verse 26. For if we sin willfully, after that we have received the knowledge of the truth, there remaineth no more sacrifice for sins, but a certain fearful looking for of judgment and fiery indignation, which shall devour the adversaries. He that despised Moses' law died without mercy under two or three witnesses. Of how much more sore punishment suppose ye shall he be thought worthy who hath trodden underfoot the Son of God and hath counted the blood of the covenant wherewith he was sanctified an unholy thing and hath done despite under the Spirit of grace. For we know that he hath said, Vengeance belongeth unto me, I will recompense, saith the Lord, and again, the Lord shall judge his people. It is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. Here's a great verse, 1 John chapter 1 and verse 7. But if we walk in the light, uh, well, Jesus is the light of the world, right? But if we walk in the light at, as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Jesus Christ, his Son, cleanseth us from all sin. So what happens to those that don't have the blood of Jesus Christ? Hmm... Somebody send John Hagee a memo, please. He'd probably rip it up. Throw it in the garbage. All right, hit, let's hit Ephesians chapter 5. Uh, Ephesus was a city in Greece. And Paul went to Greece. And I'm sure Paul spoke Greek and could write Greek. Paul was an educator educated person he was a Roman citizen so I'm sure he knew Latin and he was a Hebrew scholar a Pharisee so he obviously knew Hebrew I'll guarantee you Paul knew at least three languages uh, one of the reasons why they hate Paul is because he exposes the religion of the Antichrist Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 24. Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, so let the wives be to their own husbands in everything. Husbands, love your wives. Do you know that husbands are commanded to love their wives? Husbands, love your wives even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word. The washing of water by the word, that he might present it to himself a glorious church, a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. All right, let's go back to Jeremiah 33 and verse 8. I hope I drove this point home. Hit a home run, hopefully. And I will cleanse them from all their iniquity, whereby they have sinned against me, and I will pardon all their iniquities, whereby they have sinned, and whereby they have transgressed against me. Verse 9, And it shall be to me a name of joy, a praise, and an honor before all the nations of the earth, which shall hear all the good that I do unto them, and they shall fear and tremble for all the goodness and for all the prosperity that I will procure unto it. What does procure mean? It means to bring something. 
Perhaps you've heard of uh, military procurement. You know, it's a uh, supply sergeant. He's the guy that gets the stuff that the troops need. I'm sorry, that's my military background. I didn't know it, but uh, I guess the uh, my stint in the United States Army, uh, maybe it prepared me for a stint in the Army of the Lord. I don't know. Verse 10. Thus saith the Lord, Again there shall be heard in this place, which ye shall, shall which ye shall, oh, I'm sorry. Thus saith the Lord, Again there shall be heard in this place, which ye say shall be desolate without man and without beast, even in the cities of Judah and in the streets of Jerusalem that are desolate without man and without inhabitant and without beast. The voice of joy and the voice of gladness, the voice of the bridegroom, and that's going to be Christ, and the voice of the bride, that is church, Israel. I know people say, oh, no, the church is in Israel, and Israel's not the church. We're separate. We're different. Well, if they want to believe the Antichrist over in the Middle East or uh, the bride, well, that reject Christ, let them believe that. Let them believe that. Let them do whatever they want to do. Let them bless the Antichrist, those that curse Jesus. And let me tell. Uh, and let me. And and tell me when you find out how it ends up for them. Verse eleven: the voice of joy and the voice of gladness, the voice of the bridegroom, and the voice of the bride. The voice of them that shall say, Praise the Lord of hosts, for the Lord is good, for his mercy endureth forever. I did an entire Bible study on that phrase. For his mercy endureth forever. Boy, that phrase appears in the Bible a lot. For his mercy endureth forever. And of them that shall bring the sacrifice of praise into the house of the Lord, for I will cause to return the captivity of the land as at the first, saith the Lord. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, again in this place which is desolate, without man and without beast, and in all the cities thereof shall be an, an habitation of shepherds, causing their flocks to lie down. Are the shepherds of Animals, or are these shepherds of the Lord's flock? Verse 13, Jeremiah 33, 13. In the cities of the mountain, in the cities of the vale, and in the cities of the south, and in the land of Benjamin, and in the places about Jerusalem, and in the cities of Judah shall the flocks pass again under the hands of him that telleth them saith the Lord behold the days come saith the Lord that I will perform that I will perform that good thing which I have promised unto the house of Israel and to the house of Judah two separate houses people but they will become one under Christ Uh, let me prove that. Another reason why they hate Paul. Galatians chapter 3. Verse 26. For ye are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. Do the you know who's have faith in Christ Jesus? So how can they be the children of God? For ye are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. For as many of you as have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. There is neither Jew 
nor Greek. There is neither bond nor free. There is neither male nor female. For ye are all one in Christ Jesus. Ah, oh, no wonder they hate Paul. See, they want you to think the church and Israel is two different things. There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither bond nor free. There is neither male nor female. For ye are all one in Christ Jesus. And if ye be Christ, then are ye Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. It doesn't say you become or spiritual seed like they love to tell you. No, it says, and if ye be Christ, then are ye. You know, if you belong to Christ, you are Abraham's seed. That's what it says. Oh, no, Chapman Bob, you got it all mixed up. We become the spiritual seed. We become, yeah. Boy, I hear that stuff. It's like, oh, okay. So, yeah, the Antichrists are God's chosen people. They want to believe that? Go for it. Make sure you bless those that curse Jesus. Make sure. Let me know how you end up. I'll pass on that one. All right. Jeremiah 33. Verse 15. In those days and at that time will I cause the branch of righteousness to grow up unto David, and he shall execute judgment and righteousness in the land. Who's the branch of righteousness? Uh, it's got to be Christ. People say, oh, there's no salvation in the Old Testament. Oh, really? Jeremiah 33, 16. In those days shall Judah be saved. Saved! Don't you always hear people saying, Believe in Jesus and be saved. Absolutely. There's salvation found in the Old Testament. It was prophesied to come. Verse 16, In those days shall Judah be saved, and Jerusalem shall dwell safely. And this is the name wherewith she shall be called the Lord, our righteousness. Isn't Jesus Christ called Lord? Absolutely. For thus saith the Lord, David shall never want a man to sit upon the throne of the house of Israel. In other words, David will never be lacking to have one of his descendants sitting upon the throne of the house of, David, of Israel, King David. Uh, wasn't Christ from the line of David, from Judah? Uh, yeah. Verse 18. Neither shall the priests, the Levites, want a man before me to offer burnt offerings and to kindle meat offerings and to do sacrifice continually. Verse 19, And the word of the Lord came unto Jeremiah, saying, Thus saith the Lord, If a man can break my covenant of the day and my covenant of the night, that there should be, there, oh, I'm sorry, and that there should not be day and night in their season. Then may also my covenant be broken with David. In other words, as long as there's a sun in the sky during the day and a moon in the sky at night, God's covenant with David will always be in force. That may also my covenant be broken with David, my servant, that he should not have a son to reign upon his throne, and with the Levites, the priests, my ministers. As the hosts of heaven cannot be numbered, neither the sand of the sea measured. 
so will I multiply the seed of David my servant and the Levites that minister unto me. Moreover, the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah, saying, Verse 24, Considerest thou not what this people have spoken, saying, The two families which the Lord hath chosen, he hath even cast them off? Thus they have despised my people, that they should be no more a nation before them. Thus saith the Lord, If my covenant be not with day and night, and if I have not appointed the ordinances of heaven and earth, then will I cast away the seed of Jacob and David my servant, so that I will not take any of his seed to be rulers over the seed of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, for I will cause her captivity to return and have mercy on them. Who's the seed of Jacob? Remember, Jacob's name was changed to Israel. So, there you have it, people. Jeremiah chapter 33. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor to God the Father and His only begotten Son, Jesus, who is the Christ, the Lamb of God slain from the foundation of the world. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor in Jesus' name. Amen.